class frailty in all your pulse chain and in some bone of the foot. Mm -hmm. So if you increase the stress too fast, you switch too fast to a flat shoes, you will have calf pain, Achilles tendinitis, tippos, plantar fasciopathy, metatarsalgia, and stress fracture. So, you need to be gradual if you switch to a flat of shoes. Like you need to be gradual and more gradual if you want to integrate heel training, fast training, interval training, and plyometric stuff. That's a lot more stressful for the tissue I told you than the shoes. One training, heel training, it's a lot more stressful than we're in this one week. So I have patients coming see me because all the time they increase too, too fast their stress in their skeleton and they are injured. I try to find a reason. Most of the time, it's that. Sometimes it's the shoes. So when someone says, okay, I want to move to a more minimal shoes, I use the one minute more per training rules. And that means that uh, in, that's general rules. But if they want to move to a light trainer shoes, they need sometimes just one month. And I speak here about the prescription I did since 10 years for more than 1,000 patients. Two months for some racer flats, racing flat shoes, but four months for some others, because there is huge difference between the same kind of flat shoes. And if you want to run in five fingers, six months. You want to run barefoot, 12 months. Very stressful. I have not a lot of patients that want to run barefoot. Not a lot. The other thing, shoes change muscular activation sequence, proprioception, and balance. Shoes are responsible for certain foot deformity, alex valgus, etc. And uh, there is interesting data about that. And that's the reason why we speak so much now, now about the anatomical last. And that's a fitting question. So that's very important. To be sure that there is no pressure under the foot and deformity caused by the, sh the, sh the shoes. Very, that's essential. Antipronator technology in running shoes do not decrease the incidence of injuries. That's a very interesting study. Three study, three different military population, 7,000 people split in two groups. They look for the shape of the foot and they give a specific shoes for the specific foot. The thing we do everywhere in the planet. So we have a neutral shoes, a stability shoes, and a motion control shoes. And depends on the kind of the foot, we, for half of people, we give the good shoes for the good foot. For the other half of people, same shoes for everybody. And on that study, there is three studies. Uh, one was just with new, uh, new Balance <laughs> shoes. And the other study was with uh, a choice of shoes. So the patient has the choice of different shoes to have a better fitting and etc. So it's interesting. Very strong science. Difficult to, to, uh, to say that that's not a good science. Results, no difference. And that's probably one of the strongest science about this topic. And that's one of the things that question ourselves now about the assignation of the foot, the, the shoes for the good foot. The other thing, there is another uh, study, Ryan from Vancouver, and uh, looking for uh, shoe cushioning and antipronator for, uh, for women, recreational runner, running 20 to 45K during thir uh, 13 weeks, preparing for a half marathon, and uh, they did exactly the same thing. They randomized into nine, nine group. So in one, uh, in a different group, it was the good shoes with the good foot, but there is some uh, group with the bad shoes for, the, for a specific foot. And they look for different thing. And the two worst groups was neutral shoes for neutral feet and motion control shoes for pronating feet. 
So that's, and it's just one study. The group was not so big. Even if the, the statistical power was significant, it's just one. But it's very questioning if we do this, the good thing for the moment. Antipronator technologies and cushioning in running shoe do not increase the perceived level of comfort. That's interesting too. Higher priced shoes are not more comfortable. Higher priced shoes do not decrease the incidence of injuries. So my question for you, what's the difference between the 40 box Walmart shoes and the shoes you sell in your running store? It's you. It's your expertise in back of the shoes. It's why I don't refer my patient to Walmart and I refer to Jimmy. Why? Because he had an expertise in fitting. He give a lot of tips beside the shoes. He don't just have shoes. So I think that presently, scientifically, it's very difficult to promote the big bulky shoes to 200 bucks. But I think that if you have an expertise in back of that, it's a lot more easy to debate about that. Another thing, running shoes increase O2 consumption and decrease performance. In each 100 gram in your foot, you increase by 1% your O2 consumption. There is one interesting study Fan subject only, but interesting. And there is 11 studies showing exactly the same thing. O2 consumption during treadmill and overground running using normal shoes and barefoot. And what they look for? The, running, the traditional running shoes increase by 5.7% the O2 consumption. And they calculate what's happened, on, uh, what's mean in time question during a marathon. For the average runner, four hour, it's like 20 minutes. Tell to a four hour runner, do you want to improve by 20 minutes your marathon? Just by, we change nothing else, but just the weight of your shoes. Imagine, if we can have the shoes like very lighter, with the same ramp, the same cushioning, to be sure that the person don't have to be adapted to the shoes, because that's the problem. <coughs> if I prescribe the racing flat shoes because the runner want to run faster, he will need to adapt to this new kind of shoes, and he will need time to do that. So we can do it the same time that he continue to train with the big bulky shoes, and we can do gently one to, uh, one to the others. But it's pretty clear that the weight on the, sh on the foot have a huge influence on the performance and a lot more than on the belly. So I speak about auto consumption, but is it the same that performance? So I think that in very clean surface, it's the same. And maybe we will see again in some years, some people running very fast on track or on road barefoot. But I'm not sure that you can, uh, you will do a better performance barefoot on trail okay why because you you will protect yourself maybe running slower because you don't have shoes it's again all a question of adaptation animals don't have shoes and they run pretty fast even in trails but the adaptation is very far okay so the biggest question is why not barefoot after all this science why we don't promote barefoot running because there's no <laughs> I told you because of dangerous surfaces, but first of all, first of all, because the condes condescending looks. <laughs> and that's the reason why all of my patients don't want to run barefoot. Some uh, Sometimes I explain why it's so good to run barefoot for the biomechanic, for the tissue adaptation, for the neurophysiology. And it's just uh, don't want to run barefoot because they don't want that everybody look their... Uh, than running barefoot. So the solution, what is it? It's the shoes. But is it is the shoes that mimic the barefoot, or for sure 
don't change too much the biomechanics. Don't change too much all the neural sensation of the foot. That's very important. Don't change too much tissue adaptation. I want to show that I am sure that my, shoe, my foot don't become weak uh, in a medium long term process. So that's the reason why I recommend minimalist shoes. And minimali minimalism was not trendy 10 years ago. At Quebec City, I was speaking about racing flats. Because minimally shoes is very new. But racing flats is there since a very long time. And I was recommending that I was prescribing racing flat shoes. So my first priority is the comfort. And that means that we need to have a very, very good fitting. And I speak more and more now about the anatomical last to be sure that there is no point pressure. The second thing, cut off the cushioning, all the interference between the foot and the ground. We speak more now about the ramp, decrease the height of the heel, having more flexibility. Just take off all the stability and motion control and stuff like that and the heel, rigid heel counter and uh, all this kind of thing that I'm not sure this is a good idea for the adaptation of the foot. And having light shoes. It's interesting to know that all the company in the world presently move very gently and progressively to this kind of way. Most of the company start to produce lighter shoes, more flexible shoes, less ramp shoes, all the company. But the biggest question, minimalism is for who? Is it for everybody? That's a, a very good question. For me, it's for sure for kids. They are in the process to develop their body, develop their biomechanic, to have strong feet. So I don't understand why we want to prescribe shoes to kids. And if we prescribe shoes, less there is in the shoes, better it is for the kids. Presently, there is a lot of promotion for sh big bulky shoes for kids. I don't understand that. If you have someone that want to start to run, he's a beginner. He come in your, uh, uh, in your uh, shoe shop and say, I want to start to run. Why we would like to sell a big bulky shoes? He will learn and you'll be a biomechanic. He need to be very gradual for sure. He cannot go fast because it's start. For the beginner, for me, it's another very good reason to prescribe a very minimal issues to have better biomechanics, to promote adaptation in the tissue, to interfere less with uh, neurophysiology, and it won't be more injured with this kind of shoes than the big bulky shoes. It's not adapted to nothing. It's stuck. You need to be gradual in all the, 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 the case. Someone coming in my office and uh, with an overweight, 200 pounds gap, I recommend a minimal shoes. I want to improve his impact moderating behavior. I want to be sure that these guys run light. The best way to do this is to do some barefoot session and to have a less interference. But they need a strong flat shoes. Because most of the racing flats in the past was breaking after uh, some thousand K of running. But why this guy need the big bulky shoes and not the light one? No idea. In my office, I prescribe a very flat shoes for this guy too. If someone heel strike, the cause is the shoes. So I don't think that's a good idea to increase the height and the cushioning under the heel if, it's, if he heel strike, because it will become just worse in this biomechanic. And if you want to perform, I don't think that is a good idea to run and to train with. 80% of the training volume with the shoes that are not the same that you compete with. Some people are so anxious to be injured, they train with the big bulky shoes, all their training volume, sometimes uh, their interval too, and they compete with the light one because it's very more, it's better to perform with the light one. That's the best way to be injured. 
You are not adapted to wear flat shoes and you train with the big bulky shoes. That's the best way to be injured, not to be adapted to something. I prescribe big bulky shoes. I say to some patient, you need the big bulky shoes. <laughs> and for me, there is like three reasons. You are fully adapted to this kind of shoes. So the person run with and is fully adapted. Is not injured. When he's injured, depends the injuries, I move more for, uh, to a flat sho uh, flatter shoes. And absolutely no interest to improve his performance. Because if you want to improve his performance, I think that you need to train and to learn to use uh, very light shoes to perform better. But that's in my practice, and most of people at Quebec City, that's like 5% of people. Maybe 10. And that's runner. There is the walker too. There is a tons of walker. That's another kind of population. And I prescribe big bulky shoes for weird foot, like pathological foot, like metators chronic metatarsalgia. Uh, some people have a weird foot and very pathological foot. That's one percent of the population. Not a lot of people need absolutely this protection under the foot. So for 90% of the patient, I recommend a shoe that mimic barefoot. That's a natural way to move. But the problem is that presently, 90% of the market is big bulky shoes. You come back two years uh, in back, 97% of the market was big bulky shoes. And when I say big bulky shoes, it's the light trainer too, because light trainers are so big presently. It's a so huge interference between the foot and the ground. Change your biomechanic. Interfere with neurophysiology and will create weakness in the long-term process. And I understand that the patient comes see you. Sorry, it's not patient for you, it's client. Client comes see you with his belief, conviction, requirements. He wants the fashion stuff. You don't want the thing with five finger. That's weird. <laughs> you want the specific color that you have just in the, this brand. He want the same thing that his friend. He needs cushioning because last, last year he had a knee problem and he's convinced that he needs cushioning. So you have two choices. You explain during 20 minutes that it's not necessary because the re, uh, cushioning just increases the stress on the knee. Or you just say, uh, uh, okay, you can buy it, and uh, it's very fast and very efficient, and, uh, and it's the same thing when someone goes see a doctor for a pill. It's a lot more easy to just prescribe the pill sometimes to explain very uh, deeply the concept. Some people say, I want the same. Some people say, not too much. Okay, there is minimalism, but not too much. And uh, some people want the new technology that they read on the uh, runner's world. My question was the client that you have. Is the client well informed? And does the client have the choice? Or if you go in a running store, the only choice you have is one, two, or three different big bulky shoes. So, what I see presently is that the promotion and the prescription of the big bulky shoes come from health professional by ignorance. They come from by the <clears throat> shoe store, often by biased information. What I see is that most of shoe store have a lot of information coming from the companies. And we need just to realize that this information is often biased. It's come from a magazine by Survival. Because if you don't have uh, shoe publicity, you cannot survive. And it's come from all the company by financial interest. So for me, promotion and description of big book issues don't make sense from a clinical and scientific point of view. But I say, Often when I give a conference, I say, take your time, don't mess up your business, because for sure you cannot switch like this. 
I say be critical, especially with the shoe company speeches, that's very important, and don't worry to change progressively, to experiment, and to sell more minimalism shoes. And I, like I told you at the beginning, the reality is not just science. It's many things together. And we need to understand too that there is many link between these people, those people. And prescriptor is probably just a little piece. You have a big, big part, a big responsibility about this, about the prescription of the shoes, and the company take a lot of place to inside this market. I'm pretty convinced that science with evil, there is a tons of publication now in the process to try to find what's the reality, what's the, the truth about some topics. Is it a good thing to put cushioning in shoes or not? What's the ideal ramp? Is it zero? Or we need absolutely a ramp? There is science about this coming more. But I think that pretty everybody will just understand that science. And in five, maybe 10 years, most of people will be at the same place. And uh, it's what we saw presently. Every company start to move because some specific uh, article and science show some stuff and companies start to do lighter shoes and more flexible shoes and less technological shoes and uh, is the reason why since one to two years there is more and more minimalism shoes that minimalist shoes and is not so minimalist but it move in the good way I think and uh, I think that we can discuss about the science. That's one of the things that I, I, I read. I'm prescribed, I have a certain reality in my practice. I see tons of runner, a tons of, uh, I prescribe tons of racing flat shoes. I have an experience about that. I can speak about that too. But I think that everywhere in the world, presently, everywhere I go teach, there is a movement to be more scientific, to be more, to understand better what the shoes do. And I think that everybody will move gently in this direction. Thank you. <laughs>